By the end of this video, I promise you will have all the tools you need in order to find your first internship. Let's get right into it. The first step is to take classes. Now, I think this one's pretty clear cut because you need to have the skills and the knowledge to pass your interview to get the offer, as well as to do well in the internship to get the return offer. Taking these classes also allows you to put them on your resume, and these class names can serve as keywords that these resume parsers at these big companies look for in order to pass your resume screen. And keep in mind that these classes don't need to strictly be from your university. They can also be from online resources such as Udemy or Coursera. In my experience here at Carnegie Mellon, what I did my freshman year was I took my intro to programming course, as well as the summer after freshman year, which was the summer before I got my first internship, I took my school's algorithms and data structures course. But what I also did was I took a few specialized classes on Udemy, such as their web development course, as well as their mobile app development course. And I feel like from all four of those courses, I was able to put together the skills needed in order to get my first internship. Now, the second step is projects. Now, this is geared a little more specifically for my specialty, which is software engineering. And projects are pretty similar to classes in that there are things that you can do that you can put on your resume. And projects really come in all forms. They can come straight from the projects in your classes to independent work that you do outside of class. Now, in my opinion, these projects allow you to showcase your skills a little more because they're not constrained to the classroom at all times. They also give you something to talk about in your interview. And they also show to whoever's reading your resume or the interviewer that you're willing to go above and beyond to create these cool projects. Now the next step is your resume and your resume is super important because you could have the best skills in the world, the best projects in the world, but if you don't have a resume to showcase those skills and those projects, then you won't get your foot in the door. You won't get interviewed by these companies. Now here's my resume that got me internships at Amazon and Qualtrics and there's nothing that special about it. I don't think it's the greatest resume, but I did try to incorporate keywords that these resume parsers at these big companies use in order to screen their applicants. I feel like it's very important to use these keywords so the people looking at your resume can properly understand what you did and your contributions to your projects or your internships or whatever experience you have on your resume. For those of you that don't know, my name is Michael, currently a junior at CMU studying information systems. Gonna be working at Amazon this upcoming summer. Subscribe if you wanna see more and let's get back into it. Start applying. So everything from applying to internships to keeping track of your internships to studying for your internships can be a very boring process, but these unfortunately are very necessary evils. So one thing I would recommend to do is track your applications. This is something that I didn't do and I feel like because I didn't do it, I was a lot more disorganized with my internship applications because when you don't have experience, it's more difficult to get past that screening stage and actually get interviews. I feel that you have to apply to a lot more places in order to get those interviews. So keeping track of how many applications you've done as well as the processes that you've started would be very beneficial to help you see where you're at. Interview preparation. For software engineering, this one kind of sucks and it's just doing lead code. I'm sure most of you have probably heard of what lead code is, but lead code is basically this huge resource bank of questions. And basically companies often take questions straight from lead code or modify questions a little bit in their interview processes. If you're well versed on lead code, you'll be pretty well versed for these technical interviews. There are typically a few different algorithms you need to study, a few different data structures you need to study, but once you have those down, you can begin to work on your skills and slowly get better and better. So on LeetCode, there are three different types of questions, easy, medium, and hard. And when I first started, doing these easy problems were pretty difficult, but as I kept going at it, those easy questions slowly became easier. I could do a couple mediums, kept on going and going, and slowly those medium problems became easier and I could do a couple hard ones as well. Now, because interview preparation sucks, it can be important to get into the habit of doing it every single day. What I did this summer before I got my first internship was I set aside two or three hours a day in the morning and after lunch, and I set aside 30 minute blocks within each of those hours. And I practice what is called the Pomodoro method, which is for the first 25 minutes of that 30 minute block, you're working intensely without distractions. Then for five minutes, you take a small little break. And after a couple of those sessions, you take a longer break, 20 to 30 minutes to really get a good brain rest. One thing that is very important for interviews is also pretending like it's the real deal. And what this means for sweet internships is practicing your lead code while talking aloud. While in your interview, you have to go line by line with your code and explain your reasoning as you're writing the code. And if you haven't done that in your practice sessions, it can be very difficult to do that for the first time during your interview. So there are resources such as pramp.com, which pairs you with people who also want to mock interview, but you could also just ask your friends to mock interview you. Or if you don't like that or feel awkward doing it, what you could just do is talk to your computer yourself. One other small aspect of these technical interviews is actually 
behavioral questions. Because technical interviews are technical, there aren't that many behavioral questions that are asked, but it's still important to be well-versed in these questions. Generally, these questions take the form as first, a little tell me about yourself question, and then some questions about maybe how you work in a team or how you face a difficult problem. So it's important to have multiple stories for each of these types of questions so that when you get asked these questions in an interview, you can have that story ready to talk about. The next step is the actual interview. At this point, hopefully you've done enough interview prep. You've read over your resume before the interview in case you get asked questions about your projects or your experience. So what I recommend is to relax. In my experience for my first interview season, every single interview minutes before my heart rate would rise to like 180 or 150 and it wouldn't stop until a few minutes after the interview actually concluded. When you're in that high energy state, it's very difficult not to be jittery and unfocused. So a few minutes or even an hour before your first interview, I recommend either playing your favorite game, your favorite music or whatever you do to make you feel most calm. After the behavioral and technical portions of the interview, you typically have a few minutes to ask a couple questions for your interviewer. And this is another point in time where you can show that you put a lot of effort into wanting to be at this company. So you can ask questions about their culture or something that you found during your research. And the next point is just to be friendly. Yes, the interviews that I talked about today are technical interviews and it's important to showcase your technical excellence. And while working with one another, they'd probably want to work with someone that they get along well with. So if you can convey that you are that type of person, it's very important to convey that. After your interview, even if you feel like you didn't do the best, it's important to congratulate yourself. Because the intern grind can be very toxic and very mentally taxing, it's important always to take time for yourself and understand that there are other parts of life and other parts of college that you can enjoy without having an internship. With that being said, I also have a video on a day in the life of a college student. So if you want to see that, just check that out right here.